be upon sensing in my spirit is we never experienced before. So that's the kind of power God is going to manifest here. And the resurrection power of Christ. And the thing is, the other thing is that everybody, we are all growing in the power and authority. We are going to go to the next level of authority in the spirit. That's what I have been sensing. And uh, even your families you feel that uh, it's time now you're going, you're going to see breakthrough coming in your own lives, in your personal lives, in, in your families also, in your children. God, if you know, answers are going to come. Answers. Rabba Karamandrasa. This church positioning that uh, your callings are very clear now. You're, you're going to see who you are and uh, what a treasure God kept inside of you. It's going to be unfolded to you and you will take up your position in the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. So uh, these are the things God revealed to me. And um, so, okay, um, and there are some points, very important points God given me um, to share with you. It is, this is also for me and for the church, whole church, this is, um, you know, because these are very important points for our growth. Okay, um, let me start like this. You know, sometimes God, because elevation is coming, <laughs> that's why I'm saying, um, God is going to elevate. Okay? So, um, I don't know, maybe it's not the same time everybody's elevation. Maybe it's not the same time it happens. For some people first and some people later, next in line, it's going to happen. But it's going to happen. <laughs> Elevation is going to come. Amen. To this but I'm saying that if you know God elevating somebody in front of your eyes, in your presence only it will happen. Do not avoid listening to their their uh, their testimonies. Do not avoid. Come and listen. Come and see others people elevation. You might think that, oh, it's going to hurt me. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to, I want to hide it. I want to somewhere. I don't want to go to church because I, <laughs> it hurts me if someone, you know, please don't avoid. Please come. Please come. I'm telling you something because God is doing something. God is elevating some people in your, in front of your eyes. In, you know why? God is not doing that to purposely to make you jealous. That's not the intention of God. What, why God is doing that is, God wants you to know what God can do in somebody's life if a person obeys God, what God is able to do to that person. What is possible for God? God wants you to see it. God wants you to know that. So, you will also, next, you will be the next person Amen. to receive that elevation. Mm. So, God wants to prepare you for your elevation. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, uh, that's how you have to see things. You know, um, when Zairus came to Je Jesus for her daughter's healing, then Jesus did not go immediately to Zairus. He kept Zairus there. And he started doing miracles. Jairus might think, why he's not answering me, but he's answering others. I'm coming here, my desperate, my daughter is sick home. He's not giving me attention, but instead he's healing other people here. Why? Do you think God wants you to be jealous of him? No. God wants Zairus to have faith that what God is able to do. For that reason, delay. God delayed Zairus' answer only for that reason so that 
Zionist faith will rise up in the power of God, in the ability of God. Because what happened after some time? People came and told, your daughter is dead. Don't bother uh, Lord anymore, come. Because he already had seen some miracles there. Then Jesus said, don't worry, don't go. She's not dead, she's just sleeping. He believed. He believed and he was not shaken and he stayed there. He did not run, he just stayed. Because already he had seen some miracles Jesus did. And that his faith built up. And then, in the right time, Jesus thought, ah, now he's ready for a miracle. Now, see, God is making him ready for a miracle. Then he became ready. Then Jesus went, raised a daughter from the dead. Hallelujah. Amazing miracle than other people. Amazing and bigger miracle than other people. I am telling you, if God is elevating few people in front of your eyes, God is teaching you something. He is bringing faith in you Amen. for a greater miracle. He is building your faith for a greater miracle. That's why don't avoid. Stay there. Celebrate. Start celebrating somebody's victory. Amen. Why? You are the next. Hallelujah. You will be the next person. Celebrate. That's why. God, that's why. You know what happens here? When you start celebrating, jealousy, the things of the flesh, no room for the things of the flesh is broken. When you start celebrating somebody's victory, share their joy and say, Oh God, thank you Lord. Thank you Lord for lifting up that person. Thank you Lord for blessing that person. Do it with great joy. Amen. Hallelujah. Watch out. You will be the next. You will be the next. You know, why? Because God wants you to sow the seed for a miracle. What seed you are sowing there? What price you are paying there? Not being jealous. Instead, celebrating somebody's victory is a great price you can pay. He wants a seed. You know, how can we how can we expect a plant to come if there is no seed in the soil? It's not possible for a plant to come. Where is your seed for a miracle? Think now, because that person received the fruit because that person in the past sowed some seeds. But now your time has come to sow the seed. Now your seed is celebrating somebody's victory is your sin. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That person might have sowed seeds in the past, um, uh, maybe so many uh, uh, hardships that person gone through, but still trusted God, but still believed God, and still obeyed God, and now the person time has come to enjoy the fruit of his labor, now your God is wanted. Okay, you now sow. You sow now. When this person is getting victory, now you start sowing. What is that? Celebrate that person's victory. <laughs> Be happy for that person. Rejoice. You're sowing also now. Maybe you don't have to sow the way how other person sowed. Your sowing might be different from the other person. And I always tell that, you know, like a uh, sister Lee always tells me that 
authority, you have to receive like from, you know, like how uh, Elijah received authority from, like uh, El, uh, Elisha received an authority from Elijah by serving Elijah, right? Like always, you know, the authority flows delegate when you serve the anointed who have authority. If you serve that person, you also receive their authority. <laughs> their anointing you also receive. How it is, you know, um, that person received authority by paying a price, great price the person might have paid in their life, in the past, and they came to this level. But for you, you don't need to go through all that what they got through. Just by serving this person, you will get everything. <laughs> God made things easy for us. Hallelujah. You see, Elijah, Elijah paid the price in a different way. He gone through a lot of problems with Ahab and Jezebel and the nation, all that. But Elisha is different. Elisha just served Elijah. But Elisha received more authority. <laughs> Yes? This is the way in the kingdom works. Okay? So, um, and then, uh, uh, he is a rewarder, you know, when people receive him victory because that's the faith they put in, in God. That's why they were seeing victories because of that faith. You know, the main thing when you have faith, we always show our faith in action, right? When you have faith only, you will obey God. Otherwise, we cannot obey God. You know, Abraham obeyed God because he believed in the word of God, in what God said. That's why he sacrificed many things for God and he obeyed. That's what he's saying in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, it says he's a rewarder of people, those who seek him. Everybody who come to him must believe in him that he is there and he is the rewarder of those who seek him. Everybody who trusts in the Lord, they will obey God. Right? They will obey God. You know, uh, in heaven, the rewards you are going to get. Everything else the Lord Jesus has done for us in our lives. Only thing you did from your part, only one thing you can do. Everything else God did. Today, any victory you receive, it is because of Lord Jesus. Because he paid the price. Because he died on the cross. That's why he shed his blood. That's why you got the victory. You cannot take credit for anything. It's all Jesus. Credit all goes to Jesus. All the glory go to Jesus. But for what then he is going to reward you? He will reward you only for one thing that comes from you. Is the utter. Your choice to believe in him. Yes. That is entirely, it is yours. That no one can make you to make the right choice. You are responsible for your decisions. You're responsible for your choices. Everything else, God can help you. Everything else, Holy Spirit, God will help you to do. But this one thing, no one is going to help you. It is purely under your control. Choice. That's what he given, free will. For Adam, he did not create any robots. He created human beings with free will. Free will. It means freedom to choose what you want, what you don't want. You have the power to choose what you want, what you don't want. He's going to give you rewards for choosing the right things. <laughs> for choosing the right things, you will be rewarded in heaven. If you choose to believe the truth, choose to believe the truth. You know, truth is truth is in front of you, lie is in front of you, what your choice. Both are in front of you. 
devil offers you life spirit of truth who holy spirit gives you truth it's your choice what you want to believe he is the rewarder of people if you choose truth it means you are choosing spirit of truth who is god jesus if you choose him you will be rewarded amen hallelujah yes now i let's see that uh, i was just is coming into my mind you know what happened uh, we have friend one friend like when we came to canada one one friend uh, one person the first person we like why i said all this i don't know sewing and uh, choice choices make the right choice make the right choice and then uh, uh other thing i really want to tell you is that uh, we should not wait till we face problems huh? we should not wait till we face problems when we when someone is going through problem please learn from others mistakes learn and set right yourself <laughs> learn and set right yes uh, actually the reason why i was sharing when i looked at her oh my god so many things i learned through her condition one thing i should not neglect anybody who have problems i have to pay the price you know because the enemy making me busy with the things of my life or world all and then because of busy schedule neglected those souls were neglected so that's where i need to wake up so this busy schedule i had to break off i have this is not important the souls perishing is number one priority in our life then other things for us in this world we have to set priorities right in our life because once soul is gone you cannot bring back again like i'm feeling i'm repenting so much about this lady how did i just let leave her that way okay uh that's one thing and the other thing you have to learn other things also from as a person situation what i learned you know like I, what is she's reaping for what she sown because you know um, the word of god says galatians chapter 6 verse 7 galatians chapter 6 verse 7 she knows the lord i led her to the lord before don't think that she is like a don't know god you know not a gentile or something galatians chapter 6 verse 7 you know uh what it says the word of god says uh, this always uh, uh, this word is so scares us you be careful don't do not be deceived it says how it says do not be deceived god cannot be mocked what you so you reap this word really scares come out of deceptions please don't think that oh everything will be okay everything will be okay and brush it off brush it up oh no 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 everything will be okay no what you sow you will reap don't don't deceive even you are a christian you are a man of god you are a woman of god you have a great anointing you have a power you have authority great ministry whatever it is even you have done a good deeds good things do not be deceived and god cannot be mocked we cannot blame god what you sow you will reap same if it's a gentile if it is a child of god same 
Don't think that, oh, because you are a child of God, you are spared. Because God did not spare his own children, Israelites, when they committed sin. He did not spare them. He let them go through problems. He let them go through problems. He let Philistines and all, he let Babylonians come and destroy them, right? Don't think that God is a judge, never forget that. He is a judge and he will do justice to everybody, same. Is a Gentile or Jews or Christian, non-Christians, everybody. So that's why what you sow, you will reap. Be careful about it. That's what I was thinking about that lady. Oh God, why she's suffering? Now today she's suffering because dialysis, kidney's not working. She's on dialysis and she, oh, painful. She has pains in her body, screaming and all that suffering on the pick and expect good tomorrow. Do you want to see good days coming to you? Do you want to see blessings coming to you? Then do good today. So, that's what I'm, I want to tell you. So now, so seeds now. So, <coughs> so seeds. Sometimes I, when I see some people getting blessed, I think, God, what a blessing. Why you blessed them so much, you know? God will show me all the time what they had done in the past. What they had done in the past. When I remember the, oh my God, there's so much. You know, I was not like them. They were so humble people. They were so humble, you know. There was nothing happening, but they still obeyed God. There was no fame for them that time, but they still obeyed God. They were not working for money. They were not working for name. They still obeyed God. They are very obedient, like a servant. They, they did. Oh, yeah, they deserve today. They deserve today. They are enjoying today, yes. God is happy. You know, that's why I'm telling you today, that's what, you know, if you want to have good health, I'm telling you, God is telling me, if you want to have good health, take care of your health, no problem Take care of your health. From now onwards. Eat right, eat healthy. You know, like, even God was telling me about, like, I used to think always in that uh, some imaginary, oh, nothing going to happen, nothing going to happen, everything, oh, oh, God told me, no, be, don't deceive yourself. God told me, don't deceive yourself. Eat well, eat healthy. <laughs> don't deceive. Because always thinking, oh, I'm a God servant. Oh, God gave me this word. Nothing is going to happen. God told me that. Eat well. So, so seed, you will reap it. Don't deceive yourself. <coughs> okay? So, take care of your health, everybody. Do exercise. And God told me that don't be lazy. Lazy people cannot inherit the kingdom of God. You should not be lazy and don't think that, you know, um, everything I can eat. No. God even told Israelites, uh, uh, take to, for their health only, God told, what to eat, what not to eat. <laughs> be led by the Spirit, what to eat, what should not eat. <laughs> Ask Holy Spirit God, He will guide you to eat healthy. I'm telling you, don't think that God won't take care of these things. No, God takes care of your food. Once I was having some problem, something uh, in my health problem only, because I, I, I don't know, I, I hate to go to the hospital, but don't do that. Please go to doctor. <laughs> I'm not asking you not to. No, please go to doctor. <laughs> But in my, for my personal, that is my personal thing. Please, I don't, I'm not telling anybody. <laughs> it's my personal, like I, I want to depend on, I, I want supernatural. 
So, uh, because supernatural is better. Because natural takes time and I, I don't know, naturally people scares us a lot. <laughs> they scare us a lot and they don't give you 100% surety. <laughs> so, supernatural better because God gives 100% surety. <laughs> So that's why I rely more on supernatural. And that is a, a forever healing. This is not a temporary healing. God does. He cure. <laughs> so that's why I, I like, I prefer to depend on God. And so uh, then God told me, was telling me, uh, is that uh, uh, all the foods, like you be led by the spirit of God, what to eat, what not to eat. So one time when I was having some health issue, some problem, I was praying, I was worried about it. I was worried about, I didn't tell anybody, I was, but inside I was worried about how this problem is going to go. I don't know, I just praying in tongues and crying out. I don't know. Then suddenly in a vision, I saw garlic. Suddenly I saw garlic pieces in vision. God, why are you showing me garlic? As I led by the spirit to eat garlic. Empty stomach, mornings I'm getting up, I eat garlic. Crushed it and ate garlic. Become better. <laughs> Later I checked in the Google, garlic is uh, good for BP or something. Some, oh my God, maybe something trying to come and God immediately gave me medicine what to do. I took it, it's gone. Praise God. You know, before even anything comes, uh, God will alert you and tell you what to do. If you take care of it, it won't even come, it's go. You know, when, uh, that day when you were praying, Sharon Rigo was telling me, you know, because God knows I don't like to go to doctor, because he knows my heart desires, he wants to fulfill me. Sharon Rigo was telling me when, when we were praying yesterday, two days back, he was saying, Sister, take care of your lungs in this winter. Oh my God, I felt it's God talking to me. Take care of your lungs. Suddenly she told me that. She did not know anything. One time I had problem with the lungs. She did not know all that. Suddenly she told me, take care of your lungs in this winter. Then God, when you are telling me like how well he takes care of our health, just look to this, right? Don't think that all of a sudden one day something happens. Oh, you, you will be shocked. No. God always wants you before. He gives you warning, caution, instructions, everything. Take care of everything. So when she said that, take care of your lungs, then I, okay, God told you to take care of my lungs, then, then ask God only how to take care of. What shall I do? How to protect myself, right? Then I asked her only to pray. Then she prayed what to do. In the winter time, I had a bad habit, take bath and go out. I did not know that was wrong, you know, and cover your chest all the time. So that's why she told me, ah, oh, it's really helpful, because I never knew these things. I always do that. Before I'm going out, I take bath and go out. I never knew these things. Oh, good. Something new I learned today. <laughs> I thought, you know. So that's what I'm telling you. Don't get deceived. Just eat well what God is showing you. Eat good, good food and take, do exercise. And the other thing, please don't stress yourself. Don't worry. Don't get anxious, fear, panic. All these things please avoid because that is going to attack your health. That is going to affect you. Even when I see how God cautioned me. When I was going through problem with Daniel. That time God cautioned me. You know. Sureka be careful about your health. If you go down with this problem. Diabetes and uh, BP. <coughs> all these diseases will come. Then I, I told myself. I'm not going to go down and about this my problem. Then God told me, rejoice. Joy is a medicine for your health. Rejoice, it gives you good health. So even in the worst moments of my life, I made the choice to rejoice in the Lord. 
I made the choice. That is your choice, I'm telling you. Joy will not come automatically. Joy will not come. It's your choice. I made the choice to rejoice in the Lord. That's how God protected me from these diseases. Because God told me, when I, I deliver him, you should have a good health to rejoice in the victory, right? When he is delivered, I should have a good health to enjoy the life. When he is delivered, if I am sick, I can't enjoy God's goodness, God's victory in my life. I That really uh, touched my heart when God spoke to me. Then I really protected my health. No, I am not going to worry. I'm not going to worry. I choose to believe what word of God is saying. I, I trusted the word of God. I stood on the word of God. And I got my victory. I have, I'm healthy. Praise God. I enjoyed the victory of the Lord. In a good health. That's why I'm telling you. Please have closeness with Holy Spirit. Have that relationship with Holy Spirit. He will really teach you, lead you every step of your life. He will never let you become sick. He will never let you go down. He wants you to have good health, perfect health. Take care of it. Okay? And then other things uh, um, uh, I felt is uh, uh, self-discipline. <laughs> self-discipline. What? Who is laughing? Why? <laughs> Self-discipline. You know, uh, uh, this is also my God. I, I never looked at this way, but this is so important. Self-discipline in the kingdom of God is so important. Um, uh, is a, uh, in, a Where it is written about self-discipline? In the Bible. Fruit of the Spirit. Check it. Check it. In Galatians, right? Galatians 5. We think that these are worldly things. No! It is in the kingdom of God. God himself said that. It's when you live in the Spirit, it's one of the fruit, like fruit of the Spirit is self-discipline. Fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Self-control. You know, um, um, this, uh, if you can really, self, how do you control your, you have to control your emotions. You have to control your emotions. Like uh, emotions like anger, you know, emotions like, you know, anxiety, depression, going down. All these things, you should be able to control that. You should come under your control. Your emotions should be under your control. Who are you? You are not emotions. Do you know that? Who are you? You are not emotions. Who are you? You are not flesh and blood. Who are you? You are spirit. You are spirit. Everybody tell, I am spirit. I am but living in flesh. That is your house. But you are not the house. You are not the house. You are living in flesh. But you, who are you? You are spirit. Emotions are connected where? Flesh. So, you, you are in the house. You have power. What do you want to do in the house? You have power and control on your emotions. You are not emotions. Okay? That's why Apostle Paul said, 1st Corinthians chapter 9, verse 27. 1st Corinthians chapter 9, verse 27 says, Okay, 
No, I beat my body and make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the price. <laughs> what is he saying? I beat my body and make it slain to me. Can you make your flesh slave to you? You are not flesh. You are spirit. You have to make your flesh to your slave. That's what he said. I beat my body <laughs> and make my slave. It means he's not literally beating <laughs> It's not literally beating his body. You know, some people they do in India, like uh, they do for begging, they come, you know, they come and beat their bodies. <laughs> That's not what Apostle Paul is talking. Beat my body and bring it to my control means uh, whatever my body is craving, I won't give. That's how I'm punishing my body. Whatever my flesh is craving, I'm not going to give. My flesh is craving for alcohol. I will not feed that. My flesh is craving to eat something. No, I'm not going to give that because that's not good. My flesh is craving to do something wrong. Immorality or lying or something. No. I'm not going to let that happen to my body. Sexual sins or whatever, that your flesh is tempted to do something, what you are doing, no, I'm not giving you. No, I'm not giving you. Want to watch something, no, I'm not going to let you watch. That's what called beating. Sir Paul doing that. I beat my body and bring it to myself like a slave. That is self-discipline. That is self-discipline. <coughs> if your body wants to sleep, no, sleep, don't pray now, don't get up. No, I'm getting up. Is called beating your body. <laughs> oh, I don't feel like reading the word. No, we are reading the word. We are reading the word. I don't feel like going to church. No, we are going now. Today we are going. Self-discipline. So this is why we have to do this. Because the, you need to discipline, you need to make your flesh as your slave to do the will of God. Not for anything, not for, uh, for your own will. <laughs> you have to, the, the point is here, you, why you have to make that slave? Because you have a great purpose. You have great purpose and you need to fulfill the purpose of God. So in order to do that, you have to make your flesh as your slave. Otherwise, you are not going to fulfill the purpose of God. If your flesh is not listening to you, if your flesh is not cooperating with you, tell me, can you achieve what God kept for you? God has a great plan. God has a great vision for you. If your own body is not cooperating with you, can you go, go? Can you achieve that goal? Tell me. Can that vision be fulfilled in your life? It will not. It won't. It won't. That's the reason. That's the reason you have to beat your body. You have to make your body to come under your control so that you will accomplish the purposes of God in your life. That's the whole point of, that's the, that is the reason behind why you needed to have self-discipline. Why you need self-discipline to do the will of God, to accomplish the purpose of God upon your life. That's the whole point. Right? 
So tell the um, uh, for example, like you know, I I'll give you if we, if I say like this self discipline means you might think that okay, everything be order now, like you know, um, you know, I'm, how oh I have to okay these are the songs that we are going to sing today in this service. So this is the time, exact time I'm going to preach the sermon. This is the sermon I'm going to preach. These are the songs I'm going to sing. Huh? This is the pattern today. That's it. <coughs> that is not self I'm not calling that as a self. The whole point of self-discipline means to do the will of God. To follow the voice of God. To follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. If you say, no, God is telling you, no, say this point. No, 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 no. I already prepared this sermon. I'm going to pre <laughs> preach that sermon only today because I prepared it. Do you call that as a self-discipline? No. That's not self-discipline. The whole point behind self-discipline is obey God. Be ready to obey God. Be flexible. God can change at any time. The direction is going to change. Maybe you never planned to sing that song. But that time Holy Spirit God comes and whispers in your ears, sing this song. Don't say that, oh no, no, I did not prepare. No, sing this song. Oh no, no, no I didn't prepare this message, this point at the home. No, if God is putting that, speak it. The whole point behind this self-discipline is you have to make your flesh to the slave, to the spirit of God. To the spirit of God. Because why I'm saying your spirit, first of all, because that's where he dwells. The reason I said that you need to control your own flesh to you means because in your spirit, he dwells. God dwells. He's going to talk to you only to your spirit. Is going to work through your spirit. So the whole point of discipline is making your flesh to be obedient, to slave to the voice of God, to the spirit of God. Okay? And then what do fasting prayer will do? In the fasting prayer, self-discipline. That's what it is. Fasting prayer is self-discipline. Like, you know, one of the things, the, the, the body is asking, because your flesh is asking, craving for things, you don't want to give. And pray. Come on, pray. <laughs> pray. No, don't be distracted. Don't be distracted. Those cravings, stop all those cravings and pray. That is fasting prayer. For some people, food is a big thing. Food is a big thing. They cannot stop then they really needed to fast. Because that's the weak point <coughs> of flesh is. <coughs> then you need to. But for some people, food is not uh, uh, something pleasure. Food is just a, for need. Oh, I need to live, that's why I have to eat. For them, fasting is not food. That, that won't